what does sexual addiction, pornography, what does that actually do to our brain? Okay. And I'm going to try and keep this brief. I know. Seriously. Good luck. Though, <laughs> I know. It's a huge <laughs> question. But if you just think about it in the context that every single thing that we do throughout our lifespan, that it creates a condition that causes our brain to respond to that condition in the same way over and over and over mm -hmm. again, because our brain loves what is familiar and it's going to automatically do what's familiar to it when we condition it to do the same thing over and over. And in fact, to take that a little bit farther, that explanation is to say that for, you know, if I feel this way and I do this every single time I feel this way, then of course that's going to strengthen mm -hmm. the neural pathways in our right. brain. And so then our, we don't even really need to think about it. It's the minute that we start to feel that way. The second we start to feel that way, our brain is going to say, okay, I know what to do. We're going to go to this. Right. So, and when we do that, because our brain operates on a reward punishment model, so to speak, that the more that we do things that is going to give our brain a reward, so a hit of dopamine dopamine, along with other chemicals sure. in that mix. But when we do that over and over, then of course our brain is going to say, okay, do this mm. thing that makes you happy. Do this thing that makes you feel good. Do this thing, you know, every single time you feel this way. Yeah. So in, in taking it into that context, then with pornography and um, sexual addiction, specifically when people use sex or pornography or masturbation or or any mm -hmm. combination of those things then it does create that condition yep. by which your brain says when you feel this way do this every single time and so i think that that's one of the important things to to recognize is that if our brain if we've conditioned our brain to do the same thing over and over and over when we feel this way that really when it comes to rewiring our brain we need to have strategies that are going to disrupt that in order to create a new pathway a new neural pathway in our brain that's going to lead us toward health hmm. I, I think one of the most encouraging things to me in recovery you know in those first early years was just discovering that God really has designed the human brain for monogamy, that, it, that it's reinforced by the brain chemicals. Because yeah. I, I think a lot of us maybe think of monogamy and marriage as more about a commitment or honoring our vows or like, well, it's just the right thing to do, mm -hmm. but don't necessarily believe that our brains back that up because we do live in a culture that kind of uh, teaches or trains us for novelty, new, different, you know, the next thing. Yeah. But really we can see neurologically that's a byproduct of you know, pornography and sexual addiction, because it's it's creating, if we're stuck in a pattern of using pornography um, and stuck in a pattern of lust and fantasy, that is creating confusion in the neurochemical response and is always needing something more novel, something different. And and because of that, it, it does feel like, well, boy, how could anyone be committed to one person? Because we always need mm -hmm. something a little more, a little more exciting to, to reach that same level of um, pleasure or, you know, that to hit that reward system. And yet what research shows is that when the brain is properly bonded to one person in a safe relationship and the right neurochemicals are released uh, at climax, that the brain actually reinforces that pathway mm -hmm. and finds equal levels of satisfaction in the same experience, even over time, mm -hmm. um, and, and actually can be much more pleasurable over time than someone that's continuing to seek out the next best big biggest thing. Yeah. And I, I just remember that was one of those moments where like the Bible and science so came together and it was like, this yeah, is amazing totally. that, I mean, and you should know it's true, right? Like we should know in our faith, God is wise and he knows what he's doing, but to actually see it scientifically, like God wired the brain for yeah. monogamy when we use it in the way he designed. And, and yet when we don't, we're really creating this cycle where mm -hmm. it, it's the, what we're re receiving is never enough because the brain is always looking for that, that higher hit or that, you know, that higher level, yeah. higher level of pleasure. And the other thing I would say about it too, is how sex and pornography or addiction to pornography and other sexual activities really wires us to think about sex being all about what I need and what I feel. And so when I feel something's like, well, I got to have sex. Yeah. 
And that puts our spouse in a very, very difficult position to be the one that has to meet those needs Mm -hmm. versus what God designed is that sex is about that mutual intimacy we're feeling for connection. Yes, for pleasure and for fun and joy and excitement, but coming out of a sense of connection, not just a sense of what I need. And so when we grow up, as Heather was saying, always going to the same place, like, well, when I feel lonely, when I feel angry, when I feel frustrated, when I feel rejected, I go to pornography. And I think many people inadvertently then just put that on their spouse that I have this need, I'm feeling lonely, mm-hmm. well, now I need sex. And yeah. it may not actually be about sex. It may be more about our addiction or our struggle. And so yeah. there's just so many ways, and I agree with Heather, like, I think we could just talk about this one question for the whole episode. Oh, totally. Totally. <clears throat> I think one thing I do want to mention too, and it, it was helpful, I learned about the process called myelination, mm-hmm. which basically it's that neural, that highway, right, that we create. And basically the explanation I, I heard was that it's basically like electrical tape that gets wrapped around that highway. And so it protects it to the point where your brain batches stuff. So if you think about, you know, like this morning on my way to work, I didn't think about where I was going. Mm-hmm. I didn't think to turn on my turn signal. I didn't think to get off on the right exit ramp. Like my brain batches that. So I don't have to spend a lot of time and energy. And ca- really, it's calories. And then right, you ended up that. at Starbucks. Like, hey, here I am again. <laughs> oh my you gosh. She took my money and then I woke up. I was like, oh. No, but what's so, what I love about that is that that helps me, especially when I was in re- like starting recovery, to understand why I went from, you know, something happened to then relapse happens. Like, whoa, what just happened? I don't even know how I got to this point. It brought information mm-hmm. and, and awareness to me. Like, oh, okay, there was a trigger and my brain has batched this pattern or this this habit to a place where I don't have to think about it anymore. I just go there. And so I think that for me also diminished shame, just understanding that. And also then when we'll talk about it, that then there is a possibility to create another highway to then undo mm-hmm. that. So 